Billie Jean King, you were a pioneer and a leader in bringing equality to the sporting arena, and now you're bringing it to the workforce with the Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative. Why are you making the jump from court to cubicle? Well, first of all, I retired at 40 years old from tennis, but I jumped right into World Team Tennis Cubicle. But I also have been very involved in nonprofit work as well with the Women's Sports Foundation, Elton John AIDS Foundation. But leadership has always been important to me. I mean, that's really what I ended up doing as a player. I had a platform, tried to change it, tried to change the world. And uh, so this Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative is very important. We finally got our new executive director, Sharice Perry, who's doing a great job. Uh, we're on our way. We're having our third award um, a, a gala this year on November 16th. But during the day, we're going to have uh, our symposium. And this year, we've chosen men, a men's symposium. I don't know about... I go to all these women's conferences. I said, I want something different. I want to hear from the guys. The guys are the, most of the guys are in C-suites. They're usually the CEOs. If they don't want change, it's not going to happen. But the millennials are going to push that forward. You know, like working with Deloitte and, and getting the data from them about millennials. They're going to be, you know, 75% of the workforce by 2025. They're shaking things up and, and CEOs are going to have to respond to that. But what I would like to see is equal pay for equal work. I want more women on boards, I don't mean just white women, because it's going to make a better company, it's going to make a better organization. It's very important for us to change the culture so people can be their authentic self. Well, how far have we come since your famed 1973 oh, Battle of the we Sexes? Have, we haven't come very far. I mean, if you even look at Congress, we're not, women aren't even at 20%. If you, when I played Bobby Riggs back in uh, September 20th, 1973, we're almost on the 20th again, but that uh, women in aggregate together were making 59 cents on the dollar, women of color made less, um, and we're now we're about, in about 87 to 88%, but uh, women of color make less. Uh, you know, African Americans, I think, are 64%. Uh, Hispanic women are even less than the 50%. And if you look at Japan, women are only making 30%. So they're proving, though, that the companies that don't, aren't more inclusive in every way, culturally, women, all that, are going to lose in the end. So it behooves an organization, a corporation, a company, a startup, whatever, to have equality from within. It will make a, it, everybody will be their authentic self. People are going to have a voice. Change is going to happen more rapidly because of technology. These things are possible. I think the world has a chance to be a better place, especially the young people are worrying about the environment more than ever. These are very important about social responsibility. And then finally, you were a pioneer in breaking through uh, with, your, with your tennis abilities. So talk about really what it takes to break through that glass ceiling. Because here on Wall Street, there are still uh, lacking uh, female leadership in a lot of the banks. It really is trails banks a lot of the other industries. So talk about what it took for you to break through. Well, men follow the money more than women, we found, but we need... Uh, we just don't have the inclusion yet that we need. What I found when I was 12 years old, I had an epiphany. I was daydreaming about my sport, and I realized that everyone, when everyone wore white shoes, white socks, white clothes, played with white balls, and everybody who played was white. So at 12 years old, I asked my question, the question, where is everybody else? And that moment on, I was going to fight for equal rights and opportunities for boys and girls, men and women. That's why team tennis is equality, men and women on the same team. But I also knew that I had a platform. I was one of the lucky ones with tennis. It's a global sport, number one, and I was going to have a chance, if I could become number one, I might, a might be able to help change, positive change. You're still number one. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Greg, for having me. And thank you for watching the street.